Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. And uh, we're the, well, just to remind you that we're on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. We're going to go straight to the phones. We've got Dr. Rolo, Superintendent of Lubbock ISD on the phones. Dr. Rolo, how are you today? I'm great. How are you today, Matt? I'm doing well. Thank you. I think good morning, yeah. Dr. Rolo. Dave good morning, Steve. Yeah. Um, so uh, what? I guess uh, the biggest question people have, well, first off, Yesterday was a, a very important day, I guess. Uh, people were supposed to have, or students were supposed to have, uh, the information of whether they're going to uh, online school or if they're going to face-to-face school. And if they didn't fill it out, uh, what what happens? Well, our principals are calling. They're calling any students that they're expecting who have not registered yet. And we actually are having a little bit of a grace period because tomorrow we are going to have a drive-through uh, registration support Center set up at central office, and so we're waiting until tomorrow to be the actual final day. Okay. Yeah. Well, we uh, you do have a count though as to where uh, where it was as of yesterday. Do you not about homeschool versus those that will attend it in person? Yes, we're about thirty two percent of our students who are requesting the virtual option. Oh, thirty two percent. Thirty two percent want to homeschool. Um, well, we're not calling it homeschool. It is. It is a teacher will still be teaching the students, but it is done virtually. Well, true. It's not true. True <laughs> homeschooling, but uh, you will. They'll, they'll learn online uh, with the LISD teachers uh, at yes, the other end. Is, yeah. Yes. So uh, I was looking at uh, the schedule for those that are going to be uh, doing the virtual, and uh, it, it's pretty intense. Um, is it about? Are you doing about the same as what they would do in the school, or is it modified in any way? Well, it is. We do have to have for our elementary grades at least 180 minutes per day of instruction, and then at the high school secondary level, it's 240 minutes a day. But then at the end of the year, it has to be a total of a certain number of instructional minutes, and so it really is pretty equal to a school day. Yeah. Well, Dr. Rollo, is, is this going to be across the uh, K-12? through Yes, actually our pre-K-3. We have virtual learning for pre-K-3. Oh, wow. So what is, yeah. what is pre-K-3? So we do offer some three-year-old programming at some of our elementary schools okay. for our three- and four-year-olds. Yeah, well, Dr. Rollo, we have, a, we have a texture this morning that says, does Dr. Rollo have an opinion? about private schools reopening. About private schools reopening? I, uh, I don't uh, have an opinion on that. I know what, what Lubbock ISD is, is ready to do on August the 17th, but I don't really have an opinion on private schools. That's going to be up to those private schools. Okay. Um, so uh, the, since we've got the dates done. What, um, what exactly is... Uh, a, a day going to look like? I know that it's going to be a lot different than it was before. How exactly is Lubbock ISD going to do the social distancing? Uh, and what's going to happen if, uh, let's say, someone in a classroom gets uh, tested pot- positive for COVID-19? Okay. Those are two big questions, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> um, so for social distancing, um, we are asking the teachers to move out furniture that is not necessary so that we can spread the desks and tables out and have the students sitting farther apart than what they normally would be. Um, A lot of our teachers have couches and bean bags and reading nooks, and we love those things. And we can bring those back someday, but, but this year we need to be able to spread out our essential furniture. We're going to be holding our cafeterias at 50% capacity and spreading the students out, and then students will be eating in other parts of the school buildings as well, just so that we can keep the students spread out. We are having masks in fourth grade up, and so that will be a requirement. And then all adults, of course, will wear masks as well. So and then we do uh, with, with the mask, um, so I... I don't know that it's if it's true or not because I I didn't talk to anyone, but uh, someone that um, that I know that is that has been a teacher in the past said that um, some of the teachers were going to be expected to wear um, hoods as well or the the face shields. Is so is we, that true? It is not required. We okay. do have some available for some of our teachers 
who work with students who they're more likely to have, um, you know, spit and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so we do have some available for some of our teachers that work with those higher um, risk populations. Okay. And um, are are the teachers going to be able, when they're not uh, right next to a kid and doing instruction, are they going to be able to take their mask off to do, let's say, a a full class um, uh, lecture? If they are standing at least six feet away from a student, then we will allow them to do that for short periods of time so that the students can hear the the teacher better. We also have ordered some masks that have clear plastic fronts for our teachers who teach pre-K and kinder because as they're doing phonics instruction, the the students need to be able to see their their mouths. Well, Dr. Rolo, what can I know that no doubt you've been in contact and I'm sure you've been in a lot of meetings with teachers and educators uh, to, you know, trying to uh, get up to speed for the new school year. What what is the general consensus of uh, of all of the the teachers and uh, uh, and, and everyone associated with with school? Well, a good handful of our teachers have have taught summer school, and so those teachers have already been back in the classroom and have practiced the protocols. So with that group of teachers, there's actually a a sense of peace that we can do this. Um, With our teachers that have not started back yet, our teachers don't officially come on on duty until August the 10th. Um, There is a little bit of fear and anxiety, but it's the fear and anxiety of of the unknown and just not knowing yet how this is going to work. But they will be in staff meetings and have been in staff meetings with their principals, and they've been talking through the plans, and I think that has really helped to ease some fears. And, of course, we, you know, we acknowledge and recognize those fears and, and want to help everybody work through those. So uh, is, is the Byron Martin going to be open? It is. It certainly is. In fact, we offer some courses there that can only be taught face-to-face. Um, an example I give is welding. Um, you know, you actually have to do things with your hands and with the equipment. So that now You don't want to send that equipment home with the kids. No, we can't send <laughs> that equipment home with kids, and they actually have to be, you know, working alongside um, a master at that. So um, some of those courses can only be taught there and not virtually, and so um, that's one reason why our Board of Trustees voted to allow virtual students to still take those elective classes that can only be taught face-to-face, as well as UIL activities. Um, TEA grouped those all together, so it was an all-or-nothing kind of deal, and we did not want to tell a kid who needed to stay home for whatever reason that you cannot finish your, you know, your welding career pathway or your culinary school career pathway. So our board of trustees, and we're the only district in this area that supported that, but our board of trustees felt strongly we needed to let kids finish those career pathways. So we we have a question uh, from the uh, text line. They want to know. Uh, first, how will PE be done, as well as how many students per class? Have, has the students per class gone down? Okay. So it, the, the answer to the question as far as class size is with students, you know, about 32% of our students choosing to stay home and work virtually, that will lower our class sizes. I can't give an exact number because it just depends on the grade level and the in the particular school, but just because of the the way that's working, class sizes will go down slightly. Um, as far as PE, we will still have PE. We have uh, purchased some equipment that will help us sanitize the PE equipment after each class uses it, and um, we will also, as much as possible, just have one child using the equipment at any given time. Okay. Well, we we have to take a quick break, um, and we'll be right back with Dr. Rolo, Superintendent of Lubbock ISD, on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO. We're back on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO, with Dr. Rolo, Superintendent of uh, Lubbock ISD. And and Dr. Rolo, I I asked a question earlier. Um, We'll go back to it. Like you said, it was a big question, and we kind of got you off topic there. Uh, But... As far as what what's the protocol if someone ends up testing positive or someone's family member or or something to that extent ends up testing positive for COVID nineteen? So if we do have a student or a staff member who tests positive, we may have to shift a classroom or a grade level to remote instruction from anywhere from um, zero if it's a Friday afternoon to five days. The maximum would be five days. 
while we work with the health department and do contact tracing to determine who came into close contact with that individual. Those who did come into close contact would need to quarantine for, um, well, it depends on the situation, most likely 14 days um, before coming back to school. So Lubbock IC is a one-to-one district. So at any given time, I know it's inconvenient, but parents need to know that they may get a call saying, you know, we need to shift to remote for tomorrow. Yeah. So we're going to ask the kids. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry uh, to interrupt you. No, that's okay. Uh, well, let's, well I was just going to say it's uh, uh, you brought this up in, in, at a good time because I had a, a comment and a question. I know that a couple of days ago it was reported that there was a large study that had been completed, and and of course I think we we all know that uh, the uh, the kids the the youth don't seem to be as affected by this this virus as older people, uh, but also they determined that the youth uh, didn't transmit the, the the virus to older people very frequently so i thought that's a that's good for a situation like you're looking at because well, my concern was not so much the youth but the teachers and administration and, and uh, the situation they might be in but also yeah. anecdotally i have a, a client who has a 15 year old son that came down with the virus and uh, i talked to him yesterday and he and uh, is uh, had very mild uh, condition, uh, and he's pretty much over it now. But he and his wife, in close proximity to their son all this time, didn't they didn't uh, quarantine themselves. They have not come down with it. So I think all that all that is kind of pointing to a good situation, and maybe uh, eliminate some fear uh, from those who are concerned about sending their kids to school. Yes, I agree, Dave, and, and I actually know of, of a few people that have been in that same situation where their their teenage child has, has caught the virus at a tournament or some other activity, and then the parents did not get sick, so that is a yeah. good thing. So uh, could you, uh, right quick, I know that you claim that uh, the school is a one-to-one district, and I understand that has to do with, with laptops, tablets, and whatnot, but could you explain what that means and what that means for the students? Yes, so this year, every pre-K student and every kindergarten student will have an iPad, and we will distribute those um, in a drive through method for those students who are virtual, and then we'll pass them out on the first day for the students who are face-to-face. And then our, our first graders through 12th graders all will have Chromebooks, and so we are going to ask the kids to take those home every night just in case we have to call and say, tomorrow we're going to be learning remotely. In the case of a micro closure, yeah, uh, Doctor Rolla, we have a a, par- a parent who uh, has uh, texted this morning and says, "As a parent, I have been so impressed with Kathy Rolo's leadership. Uh, please thank her for her amazing commitment to our students. Our concern for is that all measures that she just mentioned will be implemented, as well as the student IDs and school security was." As we visited campus, we repeatedly saw noncompliance. What is her plan for dealing with that? So uh, this year, all of our middle school and high school students will be required to wear badges. We're hoping that by having this um, go down to the middle school level, that will help students when they do get to high school, they will have built habits of wearing their badge all of the time. But our our principals have have really tried to do a, a very good job of making sure students wear those badges. And as far as the... Safety protocols and things that I mentioned um, in mitigating the virus, you know, we certainly are going to have our own internal audit process, and then we also want our parents to hold us accountable, too. So um, as far as uh, I guess that's concerned, one of the fears that my wife had a little bit is when she looked at it, she felt like maybe it was it looked more like a prison because parents weren't able to go and, and have lunch with their kids like they were last year. They weren't able to uh, go to the school like they were. Um, what, what exactly is the protocol for a parent to come visit their kid at the school? Yes, and so please know, this is short term. This is just a, a precautionary step that we're taking following TEA's guidance to help um, reduce exposure and protect our students and our staff. So it is just temporary, but parents are welcome in our buildings. We just need them to make appointments. And then we are still allowing um, parent volunteers, if they come to school regularly to volunteer, 
You know, we want and need that support. So there is going to be a volunteer process that is on our website. Okay. Dr. Ola, we have like 20 seconds. Is there something else you wanted to try to throw out there real quick? Students, please, please do so as soon as possible. That will really help us um, with staffing for both the virtual school and face-to-face. All right. Uh, Dr. Ola, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Dr. uh, Ola. We'll talk to you again soon.